the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Corporal Standish was one of the youngest men on the force of the Northwest Mounted Police. He smiled to himself as he glanced at his two prisoners plodding along the frozen trail. Jack Schneider and Sam McLean, two of the wiliest criminals to set foot in the Yukon. With a sense of pride, he anticipated the satisfaction he'd experience when he marched them into headquarters. But fate sometimes cheats a man of a hard-earned victory. And even as Corporal Standish urged his team on confidently... Mush, you, my Mush! Jack Snyder spoke guardedly to his partner. Yeah, at the rate we're traveling, both of us will be looking through bars mighty soon unless we make a break. Uh, now listen, you got nothing to lose. They'll end up hanging both of us, and you know it. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like you and that Mountie have been kind of palsy. Maybe you figure he'll close his eyes and let us run away. Well, I've been trying to make him think we're letting him take us in without any trouble. Yeah, just two model prisoners. Yeah, you're jittery. Losing your nerve and what little brains you had. You gotta be making camp in an hour or so. And when we bunk down for the night, watch me. You mean you got something planned? <laughs> Don't I always? Just wait, Sam. Our friend the corporal's in for a big surprise. <laughs> Corporal Standish had been overconfident. The moment he relaxed his guard was all that Jack Snyder needed. Jump him, Sam. Here. There. That's it. Grab the gun. I've got it. Take it easy, Monty. You'll never get away with this, Snyder. There you're wrong. We are getting away with it. I'll keep him covered while you get the sled set to my Sam. Wait till I get this pack back on it. The young Monty stood watching Sam McClain load the supplies on the sled. Minutes dragged by, and then... Everything ready? Yeah, come on. Right. So long, Corporal Standish. <laughs> Sorry it was necessary to take your grub. I'll catch up with you if it's the last thing I do. Yeah, probably will be. You're miles from nowhere, Monty. And if the wolves don't get you, the cold will. <laughs> get the dogs going, Sam. Marsh, you Malamutes. See, Sam? Mounties have quite a reputation, but they're like all lawmen. I'll give you credit for the break, Jack. Come on, Marsh! But I still think you should have dropped him. Oh, it's better this way. If we'd have killed him, somebody would have found him. Maybe before we could get to Skagway. But as it is, he'll do a lot of wandering without dogs and no gun. And when and if he's found, it'll look like uh, what you might call a natural death. <laughs> Mush, you Malamute! Corporal Standish had one thought as he walked along the moonlit trail. Letting him slip through my fingers. I've got to get help. Find someone who'll lend me a sled. The young policeman set a brisk pace for himself, realizing he must cover as much territory as possible while he had strength. In spite of himself, his heart sank with misgivings as he thought of the uneven odds. Two men on a sled against the time he could make on foot. The Yukon wilderness was a land of wild beauty and brooding stillness. On a sled with a good pack of dogs, Corporal Standish had many times experienced an exhilaration in its loneliness. Now, he felt the terrible challenge it hurled. He remembered the men who died on the trails, unable to bear the cold and hardship of a merciless country. Doggedly, he kept walking, his feet aching and blistered in his boots. Daylight came. And then, another day, and he began losing track of time. Got to keep going. Can't stop. Keep going. 
my eyes. I feel like they're full of sand. Snow blindness. I thought I was heading for Preston's territory, but I might have lost my trail. Oh, it's hopeless. I'll never make it. But I'll keep going. Maybe I... I... The great dog, King, tilted his nose in the sharp Yukon air. I'm King! I'm your husband! King's more over ahead of the dogs than with him. It's almost as if he... Hmm. He's stopping. Let us catch up with him. All right, fella. What's the idea? Don't the dogs go fast enough to please you? What in the world? What are you listening for, boy? But King wasn't listening. His sense of smell often told him things long before his ears picked up a sound. And now, he'd caught the scent of a man he recognized, a man Sergeant Preston knew. He glanced back toward the Mountie. What is it, fella? Hmm? In answer, King raced along the trail, knowing the Mountie would follow him. On you, Husky! King stopped beside the prostrate man minutes before the sled reached the spot. He recognized the Mountie's uniform and knew that when Preston found his friend, there'd be an explanation. Oh, you Husky! Oh! Quite stylish. Well, he hasn't been wounded. But how could he have lost his sled? Uh, who? It's Preston, Stan. Uh, what happened? Preston? Oh, I... He's lost consciousness. Come on, fella. <laughs> this looks bad, King. Mighty bad. Sergeant Preston watched over the young policeman as he regained his strength. At intervals, Corporal Standish told his story. Until finally, he completed it. Preston frowned. And King, who was quick to sense his master's thoughts, stood quietly beside him. <laughs> and I was bragging about my stripes. I'll be lucky if I don't lose them after this. Get the dogs up, King. <laughs> That's it, fella. You get the sled, Sam. Where do we go from here, Sergeant? We'll retrace your steps and see if we can't find some evidence of the direction they took. If you ask me, they're heading straight for Skagway just as fast as my dog can get them there. At a camp beside a trail a few days later, Jack Snyder looked into the fire. What's on your mind? No, Sam, it's just possible that Monty got through to some help. <laughs> uh, well, what if he did? If he did, you'd know the first place we'd head for. Yeah? That's why we're laying low for a few days. Hey, now, wait a minute, Jack. We've got enough provisions. I say we ought to turn off here and stop at Fort Munn. We'll stock up, then much toward Juno. Get a boat there. <laughs> See what I mean? Mm, I don't know. Seems kind of risky to me. Well, it's a safer bet than walking into a trap at Skagway. If there is a trap, you should have dropped that, Molly. I told you that before we left. Well, we didn't. We can't go back now. Just remember, Sam, it was me that got us away from that lawman. And I ain't planning to walk into another one. Okay. You win. We'll turn off. Early the next morning, the two fugitives turned off the trail and the heavy snow covered their tracks. Toward mid-afternoon, they made camp and together went out with the Mounties' rifle to look for some game. When they returned to their camp, the snow had stopped falling. This is one night we won't have to settle for bacon. Good thing you dropped this dough. Yeah, it'll be a chick. Hey, Jack. Somebody's been here while we was gone. Somebody nothing. Here, look at these tracks. A bear. Well, I'll be... And he got me the grub. Made off with every last piece of bacon. Well, I was getting sick of eating it anyway. Add to the fire, will you? Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and Corporal Standish stopped at the point of the trail where Jack Snyder and Sam McLean had made a turn. The sergeant decided to make camp, and King raced through the timber, leaving the two policemen together. The snow was soft beneath his feet as he ran. 
his nose tilted in the air, sampling the scents of the wilderness. King enjoyed these runs by himself when he was free of the responsibility of keeping the team of dogs in line. Occasionally, he heard a twig snapping under the feet of an unseen animal. And then... But wait. What was that? King stopped, his lean, muscular body momentarily rigid. A bear. But with the scent of the bear came another scent. Bacon. Where would a bear find bacon in this wilderness unless... Unless he had gone into a man's camp and eaten man's food? The great dog knew the marauder-like habits of these animals, and his curiosity was aroused. No bear had broken into Sergeant Preston's rations. There must be another camp in the vicinity. He followed the bear tracks. What was that? Huh? I could have sworn I saw something moving back near the timber. Looked like a wolf. Yeah, you're imagining things. A wolf? Maybe a dog. Wolves travel in packs, and so do dogs. Forget it. As King raced back over the snow-covered country, his mind was in a turmoil. He knew that Sergeant Preston and the younger Mountie were trailing two men. This was the only camp within miles, he was sure. Could they be the men? The two he had seen sitting by the campfire? Preston would know. What is it, boy? Hmm? Hey, he seems like he's trying to say something, Sergeant. Team lined up. Hey, what is this anyway? Mm, that's strange. He's lining them up, but I wonder why. King knew the distance could be covered much faster in the sled, and he used every device he could think of to make the Mountie understand him. I don't know what you're trying to say, King. I never oh. saw anything like it in my life. Taking your sleeve and leading you to the sled. Looks to me like he wants you to, to get ready to march. Well, that seems to be it, huh, King? But we've just made camp. Oh, whatever it is, it can wait. Well, that's over. where you're wrong, Stan. Whatever it is, King thinks I should see it now. And that's what we're going to do. King led the team to the small camp where Jack Snyder and Sam McLean sat by the fire. Too late, they recognized Corporal Standish as he approached them. That's McLean and Snyder, Sergeant. Jack, he, he followed us. I told you you should have dropped Shut him. up. All right, Sonny. You've got us covered. And this time, Snyder, I'm going to keep you covered. <laughs> It was a week later when Sergeant Preston walked into Inspector Maynard's office. And as his superior congratulated Corporal Standish, the young Monty looked uncomfortable. You've done a fine piece of work, Corporal. All goes to prove you deserve those stripes you won. <laughs> Sir, if it hadn't been for Sergeant Preston and his dog... Sergeant? Uh, what do you mean, Standish? Oh, I think, sir, that Corporal means that King and I made the trip with him. We met on the trail. Is that so? Well, sometimes it helps having a friend with you on the trail. Gets lonesome at times. Well, I'll be... Uh, what's that, Corporal? Uh, oh, I said it, it does help, sir. Yes, it's a mighty big help. And I won't forget it, Sergeant. <laughs> yes, King, old boy. The Corporal's case is closed. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. This is Jack.